In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about sequences and series. For the scope of this class, we are going to be covering linear sequence, the nth term of a linear sequence, arithmetic mean. We are also going to talk about exponential sequence, the nth term of an exponential sequence, and also geometric mean. After that, we are going to extend into series. We talk about the sum of the nth term of an arithmetic and geometric progression, and also we are going to talk about the sum to infinity of an exponential sequence. So let's get started. Let's start this class by looking at what a sequence is. We say that any set of numbers generated in accordance with a definite pattern is called a sequence. Take for example, look at the following set of numbers. If you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. You can say this is a sequence. We can also have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We can also have 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and so on. Also, looking at 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. We can see that this set of numbers are the first ones sequences. Now, if you study each set of number, you are going to see that each of them has a relation. Here we have 1, followed by 2, followed by 3, followed by 4, followed by 5, by 6, and by 7. Here we have 2, followed by 4, by 6, by 8, and by 10. If you look at each of these numbers, they are generated in accordance with a particular pattern. We are not choosing a random numbers like 2, 20, 4, 1, 0, and so on. Each of them follow a particular pattern. Each one different from the first one is different from the second one, different from the third one, and from the fourth one. Now, this now brings us to what we refer to as definite and indefinite sequence. In a definite sequence, we know the beginning of the sequence and the end. For example, look at the following sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have a full stop here. We can see this, the, this sequence is a definite sequence since we know that the first term is, the, is 1 and the last is 5. So we can see this sequence is a definite sequence. Also, we have indefinite sequence. All these examples, they are indefinite sequence. They are marked by the three dots. One, two, three, four, and the three dots. This three dots signifies that this particular sequence continues indefinitely up to infinity. For each of these sequence, each particular set is refers to as a term. Each number in each set refers to as a term. So we have a term here, a term, another term. And how do we name this? This is the first term, the second term, the fourth term, the fifth term, the sixth term, and progresses like that to infinity. And the three dots signifies that this particular sequence continues indefinitely. So after that, we are going to have another number followed by another number till it continues to infinity. And that is the meaning of sequence. We have also looked at the definite and indefinite sequence. Before we continue, let me give you a tip. At the end of this tutorial, we are going to be having a bonus section. At this last session, we are going to be talking about the application of sequences and series in real life. I'm sure you don't want to miss that session, so stick around. Now, to further elaborate on sequence, let's look at the first example that we may mention above. In the first set, we have one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. We have made mention that this type of sequence is referred to as indefinite sequence. And the number 1 here is referred to as the first term, number 2 is referred to as the second term, third term, and so on. The nth term of a sequence is denoted by Tn. T n. 
So this is first as the nth term of a sequence. For example, the second term is first as t2. The third term is going to be t3. The first term will be t1. Now take for example, looking at the sequence above, we can say that t1 equals to 1, t2 equals to 2, t3 equals to 3. The first term, second term, and the third term. So tn is going to be the nth term. This can be any number. It can be t50, t100, t3, or t anything, depending on the number you are looking for. So let's try to generate a pattern in the sequences we have looked at before. For the first example, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Here we can see that T1 equals to 1, and T2 equals to 1 plus 1. That is equals to 2. And T3 equals to 1 plus 1 times 2. This equals to 3. We can see that this also goes with what we have above. We have T1 to be 1, T2 to be 2, T3 to be 3. Also, T4 equals to 1 plus 1 times 3. And this equals to 4. Also, T5 equals to 1 plus 1 times 4. And this equals to what? 5. So if you take a look at this very well, we are going to see that a pattern is being repeated. Here we have t2 equals to 1 plus 1, t3 equals to 1 plus 1 times 2, t4 equals to 1 plus 1 times 3. Look here, we have t4 and we have 3 here, t3 and we have 2 here, t5 and we have 4 here. So we can say that tn will be equal to 1 plus 1 times n minus 1. So therefore, if you have tn equals to 1 plus n minus 1. This can be elaborated by saying if you have t20, it's going to be 1 plus 20 minus 1 equals to 1 plus 19, which equals to 20. And if you take a look at this pattern fairway, well, we're going to observe that by the time you have t20, it's going to be equal to 20. So here we have generalized an expression for this particular sequence. So each sequence color follows the term tn equals to 1 plus n minus 1. To practice this, look at the second set of series that we looked at above and try to generate a pattern and therefore bring out a formula that is guiding the sequence. Let's look at the fourth example that we looked at before. There we have the sequence 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, and so on. Here we can have that T1 equals to 3, T2 equals to 6, and we have T3 equals to 12. Now let's look at a pattern that is occurring among these three sets of numbers. So we can say t2 equals to 3 times 2 raised to the power 1. That's equals to 6. t3 can be 3 times 2 raised to the power 2. That's equals to 12. So let's try whether t4 is going to give us the same pattern. We have 3 times 2 raised to the power 3. And this equals to 24. So, the pattern is still repeating just like we have in the first example. So, we have 4 here and we have 3. We have 3 here and we have 2. We have 2 here and we have 1. So, we can say that Tn equals to 3 times 2 raised to the power of n minus 1. So, to generalize this, we can say Tn Tn equals to 3 multiply by 2 to the power of n minus 1. Therefore, if you have t20, it's going to be 3 times 2 to the power of 20 minus 1, which equals to 3 times 2 to the power of 19. So this particular formula gives us the general term 
for this sequence. This is simply the rule guiding the sequence. So if you have Tn, it's going to be 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now here we have an example which says, find the first four times of the sequence whose general term is given by 3 plus 7n. In this example, we already have a general term which has been defined by Tn equals to 3 plus 7n. So we have to look for T1, T2, T3, and T4. That will constitute our first four terms. So here we have T1 to be equal to 3 plus 7 times 1. And we have our T2 to be equal to 3 plus 7 times 2. So let's find an answer to this. The first one equals to 10. Here we have 17. So T3 will be 3 plus 7 times 3, and this equals to 24. We have T4 to be equals to 3 plus 7 times 4, and this equals to 31. So the first four terms of this sequence will constitute 3, 17, 24, 31. So this is an application of how we can look for the terms when we have already gotten the general term. And for this example, we have the general term which is defined to us as Tn equals to 3 plus 7n. And as always, n signifies the term number. So it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now try this. Find the first four terms of the sequence whose general term is given by 20 minus 1 over 2n. Try this. Feel free to post your answers in the comment section below. A sequence of numbers can be generated in any fashion as long as the pattern by which the terms are generated is consistent. There are two important ways by which a sequence can be generated. The first one is linear or arithmetic progression. This is generated by adding or subtracting a constant number to a particular preceding term. Then for example, if you have the pattern 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. Here the pattern is addition of 2. We have 2, the second term followed by 2 plus 2, followed by 2 plus 2 plus 2, followed by 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Here we can see that a constant term of 2 is being added to the preceding term. 2, 2 plus 2 gives us 4, 4 plus 2 gives us 6, 6 plus 2 gives us 8, and 8 plus 2 gives us 10. Another example is having 31, 26, 21, 16, 11, and so on. For this particular sequence, 5 is being subtracted from the preceding number. 31 minus 26 is going to be 5. So we can say that subtracting 5 from 31 gives us 6. 31 minus 5 equals to 26. 26 minus 5 equals to 21. 21 minus 5 equals to 16. 16 minus 5 equals to 11. Now to get the following, the next we are going to say 11 minus 5, which is going to be 6. And this is a pattern for generating sequence. For the first one, the addition of 2. For the second one, we have the subtraction of 5. So this can be referred to as linear or an arithmetic progression. Now for the second part, we have exponential sequence or geometric progression. This type of progression is generated by multiplying or dividing by a constant number to get a term. For example, having the progression 3, 9, 27, 81, If you study this progression, you are going to see that there is an exponentiation by 3. We have the first time to be 3. The second time is 3 times 3. 
and the terms, times is 3 times 3 times 3 and so on so if you multiply 3 by 3 we have 9 if you multiply 9, 9 by 3 we have 27 if you multiply 27 by 3 we have 81 and 81 by 3 we have 243 so this is an exponential sequence in which there's multiplication by 3 Now let's look more into the sequences type that we looked at before. The first thing we are going to be looking at is the linear sequence. We have already looked at the meaning of a linear sequence. Also now let's look at some basic definitions in linear sequence. The first one is the first term. And it's denoted by A. Simply the first term is the first term. So given a sequence so that's T1, T2, T3, T4, and so on. So T1 equals to A. That's the first term. Also, let's look at the common difference. The common difference is denoted by D. The common difference D is the difference between a term and the term immediately preceding it. For example, if you have the sequence T1, T2, T3, T4, and likes, so D it defines as T2 minus T1. Also, it can also be equal to T3 minus T2 or T4 minus T3. Now, to generalize our definition of common difference, we can say that common difference D equals to Tn minus Tn minus 1. So just to explain this further, if you have T4 minus T4 minus 1 equals to D, and it will be T4 minus T3, which equals to D. Also, it will be necessary for us to note that if you have a sequence such as T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, then T2 minus T1 must be equal to T3 minus T2 must be equal to T5 minus T4. And this, as we know, equals to T. So if a particular sequence is a linear sequence, then T2 minus T1 must be the same as T3 minus T2 must also be the same as T5 minus T4. And the term we derived there is referred to as the common difference. For example, having a sequence such as 2, 4, 6, it's the, the common difference will be 4 minus 2, which equals to 2. If you decide to, if you decide to take 8 minus 6, this also equals to 2. If you decide to take 10 minus 8, this also equals to 2. And we can say that this particular sequence is a linear sequence. We have another example here. It says find the common differences between the following progressions. For the first part, we can say that D equals to T n minus T n minus 1. So I'm going to pick 7 minus 6 and this equals to 1. Also, if you pick 5 minus 4, this also equals to 1. If you pick 2 minus 1, this also equals to 1. So we can say that for the first progression, D common difference D equals to 1. For the second progression, also, D equals to Tn minus Tn minus 1. So, if you pick minus 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2, this equals, equals to minus 1. Also, if you say minus man or number 1 over 2, minus minus 1 over 2, this also equals to minus 1. If you try to choose minus 2, 1 over 2 minus minus 1 1 over 2 this is equals to minus 1 so for this progression we can say d equals to minus 1 so don't forget the general term for looking for the general for the common difference d is going to be t n minus t n minus 1 so we can say this equal to t 4 minus t 3 or t4 
C2 minus T1. Now we're going to generalize a formula for finding the nth term of a linear sequence. Here we are also going to take note that A equals to the first term and D is the common difference. So as it is all the time, we have our T1 equals to A and T2 minus T1 equals to D. From here we can see that T2 equals to T1 plus D. So we can say T2 equals to A plus D. We can say that T3 minus T2 equals to D. And we have that T3 equals to T2 plus D. And here our T3 is A plus D plus D. And this gives us A plus 2D. Also, if you have T4 minus T3, this also gives us D. So we have T4 equals to T3 plus D. Our T3 is A plus 2D plus D. And this gives us A plus 3D. Now, if you take a look at this, we can see that a pattern is pretty repeated. For T2, we have A plus D. For T3, we have A plus 2D. For T4, we have A plus 3D. So therefore, we can say that for T5, we are going to have A plus 4D. For T6, we are going to have A plus 5D. For T7, we have A plus 6D. So here, let's generalize a formula for this. Hence, the nth term of a linear sequence with first term A and common difference D can be first as Tn equals to A plus N minus 1 D. To write this in a clearer ink, we have Tn equals to A plus N minus 1 D. And this is first as the formula for finding the nth term of a linear sequence. We have an example here. The question states, find the 8th term of the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go back to the formula for finding the nth term of a linear sequence. We have the formula Tn equals to A plus N minus 1 G. Now, there's one thing we have to check here, whether this sequence is a linear sequence or not. So let's check 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 3 is 1, 5 minus 4 is 1. So we can see that we have a common difference of 1. And our first term A equals to 1. And we are looking for Tn, which equals to the T8. So here you have T8 equal to A plus. Our N is now 8 minus 1D. So T8 equals to A plus 7D. Now we have our A to be 1 and our d to be equal to 1. So we can have this to be 1 plus 7 times 1. And we have t8 to be equal to 1 plus 7. And this equals to 8. So we have t8 equals to 8. And this greatly makes sense because if you look at this sequence, they are consecutive whole numbers. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. By the time we, are, we reach the 8th term, we are going to have 8. Just like 5, 6, 7, it. Now looking at another example, here we have find the 8th term of the sequence 1 over 2, comma negative 1 over 2, comma negative 1, 1 over 2. So just like we have in the previous example, we have our A to be equal to 1 over 2. And D can be gotten from doing minus 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2. Here you have minus 1. So let's try for the other terms. If you have minus 1, 1 for 2, minus, minus 1 for 2. So let's take this. The answer is minus 1. So we can say that our D equals to minus 1. Going back to our formula, we have Tn equals to A plus N minus 1 D. Now we have A 
to be equal to 1 over 2 and we have d to be equal to minus 1. So we are looking for the 8th term which is t8 equals to a plus 8 minus 1d and this is a plus 7d. So bringing back our times we have a 1 over 2 plus 7 times minus 1 and we have 1 over 2 plus 7 multiplied by negative 1 equals to negative 7. And then plus multiplied by minus is minus. And we have minus 1 over 2 minus 7. So the answer is negative 6 over 1 over 2. So we can have our t8 to be equal to negative 6 over 1 over 2. So here we have t8 to be this so this is the eighth term if you continue with this progression we are going to have the eighth term to be negative six one by one over two and for this if you continue with this progression we are going to have the eighth term to be eight we have another example here the question states the fifth term of a sequence is 48 and the first term is four find the common difference in this example we are required to find the common difference of a sequence we have our a to be equal to 4 and t5 equals to 48 going back to the general formula for finding the n term of a sequence we have tn equals to a plus n minus 1 d and then we already have our t5 to be equal to 48 we have t5 equals to a plus n minus 1 d equals to 48 we can say this equals to a plus 5 minus 1d equals to 48. a plus 4d equals to 48. Since we have our a to be equals to 4, we can then substitute a to be equal to 4 here. So we now have 4 plus 4d equals to 48. And then we have 4d to be equals to 48 minus 4. We have 4d equals to 44. Dividing through by 4 here, we have our d equals to 11. So therefore, the common difference is 11. d equals to 11. And that is what we are required to find from this particular question. So to do some kind of check, if you have our a, to be equal to 4 then t2 is going to be equal to a plus d which equals to 4 plus 11 and this is 15. so you can try to generate t3 t4 t5 for this particular sequence from the beginning of this section we have been talking about the arithmetic progression now let's look at the arithmetic mean in statistic, the mean is refers to as summation of x over n. Now looking at the mean from another point of view, that is the, from the point of progression. If you have two numbers p and r, the arithmetic mean q will be such that p, q and r form a linear sequence. To explain this again, if you have two numbers p and q we can say that the arithmetic mean is a number q in which having the sequence p q and r this particular sequence is going to be a linear sequence and if this is the case if you have our d equals to q minus p also we can also have d to be d equals to r minus q And here we have q minus p equals to r minus q. So we have q plus q equals to p plus r. And q equals to p plus r. Then q equals to p plus r divided by 2. So the expression p plus r divided by 2 is first to us arithmetic mean. So arithmetic mean. Q equals to P 
p plus r divided by 2. So having two numbers a and b, the arithmetic mean will be equal to a plus b divided by 2. And as you can see, this also is the same with the normal statistical mean. So here you have an example, find the arithmetic mean of 4 and 18. So as a general term, if you have 4, 18, we are going to have a number Q as the arithmetic mean. So therefore, Q equals to 4 plus 18 over 2. We have Q to be equals to 11. So here, 11 is the arithmetic mean of 4 and 18. And that brings us to the end of the first type of sequence, which is the linear sequence or arithmetic progression. Now let's talk about the exponential sequence. In an exponential sequence, the ratio of a term and that immediately preceding it is always a constant, and this is called the common ratio. Just like we have in the linear sequence, that a term and the term following it, we have a difference, which is refers to as the common difference. Here, yeah, what we have is the common ratio. And this is abbreviated as R. If you have the following progression T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. The common ratio is defined towards the ratio in between a term and the term precedent. We have R to be equal to T2 over T1. Can also be equal to t3 over t2, we also be equal to t5 over t4. And so on. So to draw a general term for the common ratio, we can have r equals to tn over tn minus 1. To illustrate that fully, we have common ratio r to be equal to t n divided by t n minus 1. So the common ratio also must be equal just like the common difference. So if you have t 2 over t 1, this must also be equal to t 3 over t 2. This must also be equal to t 4 over t, t 3. And this gives us the common ratio for an exponential sequence. Remember that the general, general term for representing the common ratio is Tn divided by t n minus 1. As an example, let's find the common ratio for this sequence. We have the sequence 36, 12, 4, and 1 over 1 over 3. Since our RR must be the same, we can say t n over t n minus 1 equals to r. And here I'm taking t2 over t1. And this equals to 12 over 36. This equals 1 over 3. What if I decide to choose t3 over t2? I'm going to have 4 divided by 12. And this also equals to 1 over 3. So we can see that the common ratio here is also different. It's also the same. So just like we have in the common difference, the common ratio also must be the same. So for this particular sequence, we have the common ratio r to be equals to 1 over 3. Okay, I have something for you here. Try this. Find the common ratio in this sequence. We have 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. And feel free to post your answers in the comment section below. Just as we generalize a formula for finding the nth term of a linear sequence, let's do the same for GP. And by GP, I mean geometric progression, which is also the same as exponential sequence. Here also we have t1 to be equal to a, that's the first term, and we can have that t2 over t1 equals to r. So here if you cross multiplication, you are going to have t2 equals to t1 times r, and this is the same as a times r, which equals to a r. Also, if you have t3 over t2, 
this is equals to r and we can have that t3 equals to t2 times r we already have our t2 from here that t2 equals to ar and times r we have a r square likewise if you have t4 over t3 we're going to have this to be equals to r and we can have that t4 equals to t3 times r we already have our t3 to be a r square so this is a r square times r and this gives us a r cube now studying this pattern we can see that a we have t2 and we have a r t3 and a r square t4 and a r cube so so if you have t5 this will be equal to a r to the power of 4 if you have t6 this will be equal to a r to the power of 5 now to generalize this we can say that t n equals to a r to the power of n minus 1 hence the nth term of an exponential sequence t n with first term a and common ratio r is given by t n equals to a r to the power of n minus 1 as always our n can be from 1, 2, 3, and above. As an example, we have a question here. The question says, find the 16th term of the sequence 3, 6, 12, 24, and the likes. So, here we have our a to be equal to 3, and r equals to t n over t n minus 1. So choosing 6 and 3, here we are going to have our r to be equals to 2. Also, if you try to check by taking 12 over 6, we still have our r to be equals to 2. Given that the formula for finding the nth term of, a, of an exponential sequence to be tn equals to a r n minus 1. So we can have our t16 to be equals to a r 16 minus 1. And this is equals to a r to the power of 15. So we have our a to be equal to 3 times 2 to the power of 15. I'm trying to solve this using the calculator, we have the answer to be 98,304. So we now have our t16 to be equal to 98,304. So this is the answer to this particular question. Don't forget here that we have the general term for finding the nth term of an arithmetic of a geometric sequence to be tn equals to a r to the power of n minus 1. Here we have another example. The question states the second term of a GP is 35 and the fourth term is 875. Find the first term and the fifth term. Let's try to highlight all the terms that we are given in this question. Second term is t2 equals to 35. And the fourth term, which is t4, equals to 875. Now let's approach this by saying t4 over t2. And this equals to a r to the power of 3 over a r to the power of 1. So where are this coming from? Let's try to analyze this before going. We can say that our t4 equals to a r to the power of n minus 1 which equals to a r to the power of 4 minus 1 equals to a r to the power of 3. And our t2 equals to a r to the power of n minus 1 also equals to a r to the power of 2 minus 1 equals to a r to the power of 1. Or simply we say a r. So if you divide this, we have t4 over t2. This is going to be a r to the power of 3 over a r. And this, according to the question, equals to 875 over 35. And solving this, we have the answer to be equals to 25. Now, one thing we have to note here is that here we can define this and have this to be remain to r to the power of 2. So here we can say r to the power of 2 equals to 25. Okay, a we now have r to be equal to, to the power square root of 25, and this equals to what? 5. 
So for this particular sequence, we have gotten our R. R which equals to 5. So going back to our term T2, which equals to 35. So and we have the formula to be T2 equals to A2 R from here. So we can say that T2 equals to AR equals to 35. We now have AR equals to 35. And since our R equals to 5, we can say 5 times A equals to 35. And we have our A to be equals to 35 divided by 5, which equals to 7. So for this sequence, we have gotten our A, which equals to 7, and our R, which equals to 5. So we can now find the first term and the fifth term. And as we are going to have it, our first term A equals to 7 already. By what we got here. So now is to find our fifth term, which is T5. So T5 will be equal to AR to the power of N minus 1, which equals to AR5 minus 1, which equals to AR to the power of 4. So we can now say that T5 equals to A, which is 7, times R, which is 5 to the power of 4. So this equals to 7 multiplied by 5 to the power of 4 is 6 to 5. And 7 multiplied by 6 to 5 equals to 4,375. So from this sequence, we can say that our T5 equals to 4,375. In arithmetic mean, we have the formula to be just like the statistical mean. But the geometric mean is quite different. Suppose we have the terms x, y, and z to be the terms of a geometric progression. Then we can say that r equals to y divided by x, where our r still remains the common ratio, and r also equals to z divided by y. Since the r is the same, we can have that y divided by x equals to z divided by y. And then cross multiply, we have y squared to be equals to xz and y equals to, to the root of x, z. So, we refer to y as the geometric mean. So therefore, if you have to find the geometric num mean of particular number A and B, the geometric mean will be the square root of A multiplied by B. Now try to do this. Find the geometric mean of 8 and 32. Don't forget, if you have 8 and 32, we are going to have a number here. Y, what to be the square root of? So try to check this and feel free to post your answers in the comment section below. And with that, we've come to the end of sequence. Now let's talk about series. There is a quite difference between series and sequence. Since we know sequence is just an array of numbers such as T1, T2, T3, T4, and so on, series is simply the sum of a sequence. To put it in a general term, series can be defined as the partial sum of a sequence. So, having the above series as T1, T2, T3, T4, and so on. We can have the series S to be equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 plus and so on. What we mean by partial sum? Since some series, some sequence proceeds indefinitely, these are the first words, indefinite sequence, we might not be able to have the sum of all the entire terms in the sequence. So, we can only have the sum of the fifth of the first five times, or maybe the sum of the first hundred times, or maybe the sum of the first five hundred times. So here we, are, we only have four terms that will make it feasible. We can look for the sum of the first four terms. So that is why series is referred to as the partial sum of a sequence. Most of them you are going to be saying the question such as find the sum of the first three terms of a sequence, 
or find the first three times of a series find the sum of the first 20 times of a series and so on and just like we have formula for finding the nth term of a linear sequence and the nth term of a geometric progression we also have a formula for finding the sum of the nth term of a linear sequence take for example here if you have a series s to be equal to 1 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 we can still find the sum of the first five times from this particular series, and that is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which equals to 15. So this equals to 15. So what if you have for this particular series, you are supposed to find the sum of the first 3000 times? So that we can't be writing it one after the other. So we now have a formula which generates it, and for the sum. Of the nth term of an arithmetic progression, we have our Sn to be equals to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. So, this is the formula for finding the sum of the nth term of an arithmetic progression. Here we still have all our terms to be the same. Our a is still the first term, and d is the common difference. Where n refers to the number in which you are finding the sum of the term. For example, if you are to find the sum of the first five times of a particular series, you are going to have S5 equals to 5 over 2 and so on. So this is the general formula for finding the sum of the nth term of an arithmetic progression. The formula is also given here clearly. We have Sn to be equals to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. So now let's look at an example from this particular formula. We have an example here which is that find the sum of the first 20 terms of the series. Here we have 1, 5, 9, 13, and 17. If you like, and which is not advisable to be done, we are not going to do that. That is quite difficult and it's going to take a lot of times. If you are going to be writing down all the 20 terms and to now add them each and every one, one after the other is going to take a lot of time. So we are going to use the formula now which says that Sn equals to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. So you see this formula, we are going to have our n which is 20 in this case and our a to be the first term and our d to be the common difference. So but before we proceed, let's, let's look at all our terms. We have our n to be equal to 20, that is what we are looking for to sum of the first 20 term. And we have our a from this place to be 1. That is the first term. I have our d to be the common difference. Let's divide, let's decide to choose 5 minus 1. This equals to 4. 9 minus 5. This equals to 4. So we now have our common difference d to be equals to 4. So let's go by the formula. S20 equals to n over 2. That is 20 over 2. 2. A, A now is 1. Plus n minus 1. That is 20 minus 1. And d is 4. So here we have 10, 2 plus 19 times 4. So if you simplify this using the calculator, you are going to have our S20 to be equal to 780. So you see how simple it is to use the formula to get the sum of the nth term of an arithmetic progression. Here we have the sum of the first 20 terms to be equal to 780. If you want to check this for yourself, you can try to write all the terms in this particular series. You can write the first 20 terms. And don't forget, since the common difference d equals to 4, if you want to get the next term, just add 4 to the preceding term. You are going to get all the 20 terms. And you can add them one after the other. You are going to have the same answer to be 780. But I'm not advising you to do that. It's going to take a lot of time. What you can simply do is to use this particular formula S20 equals to 780 and the formula is coming from here. Let me write the formula again. Here you have Sn equals to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 d. Before we move to the next section, 
I'll let us look at another formula for finding the sum of the nth term of an arithmetic progression. The one we look at before, which is Sn equals to n over 2 to a plus n minus 1. It can easily work if you are considering an indefinite sequence in which it continues indefinitely. What if you have a definite sequence such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? A formula we can use here is Sn equals to n over 2 a plus l where our a still remains the first term and l is the last term so this formula is used to find the sum of the nth term whenever we are considering a definite series in looking for the sum of the nth term of a geometric progression two formulas are applicable and these two formulas, they are not interchangeable. They are being guided by a particular principle. If you have the absolute value of R to be greater than 1, use a formula. And if you have the absolute value of R to be less than 1, use another formula. So let's look at this, each of these formulas. If you have the absolute value of R to be greater than 1, use the formula Sn equals to A to bracket R to the power of N minus 1 everything divided by r minus 1 and if you have the absolute value of r to be less than 1 use the formula sn equals to a bracket 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r so take note of these formulas maybe you have the major differences whether we are subtracting r from 1 or we are subtracting 1 from r depending on whether the absolute value of r is greater than 1 or the absolute value of r is less than 1. So if you have a sequence such as t1, t2, t3, t4, the first thing you have to check is the r, and r which equals to tn over tn minus 1. So if this is greater than 1, the absolute value, you are going to use the formula. And if the absolute value is less than 1, you are going to use this formula now I want you to note something here that we are looking at absolute value so it, sometimes if you have your r to be equals to minus 1 you are going to be looking at the absolute value of r which is 1 so therefore we can say that this particular r is greater than 1 or equals to 1 so if you have absolute value to be equal to negative if you have the value of r to be equal to negative, you have to take the absolute value for you to determine whether it is greater than 1 or not. If you have our r to be equal to negative 2, naturally this is less than 1, but we are going to be looking at the absolute value of r, which equals to 2. Therefore, this is greater than 1. Now, what I mean is that if you have your r to be equal to negative 2, just like we have here, and you have the absolute value of r to be equal to negative 2, to be equal to 2, so you are going to use this formula, which says r is greater than 1. And you have, if you have your r to be equal to negative 0 0.5, if you take the absolute value of this, you are going to have 0 0.5. And here we can see that this absolute value is less than 1. So we use this formula. Here we have an example which says we find the sum of the first six terms of the series 18, 6, and 2. Let's go back to our formula. But before we can write any formula, let's look at what our r is. We have our r here to be equal to 6 over 18. And this equals to 1 over 3. We know that the absolute value r here is also equal to 1 over 3. And this is less than 1. So we use the formula Sn equals to a to the power of 1 minus r everything divided by 1 minus r. So we have Sn equals to our a according to this particular question is 18. We get 1 minus r that is 1 over 3 to the power of 
six since we are looking for the sum of the first six sum over one minus one over three. Putting this in calculator, we have the answer to be equal to seven hundred twenty-eight divided by twenty-seven. So and this is the sum of the first six terms of this particular series. Seven hundred twenty-eight over twenty-seven. Let's look at another example, which is the reverse of what we have in the first example. Here we have our a to be equal to 2 and our r equals to 6 divided by 2, which equals to 3. So, the formula we use now is, not, is going to be different from the, what we used in the previous example. We are going to be using the formula sn equals to a bracket r to the power of n minus 1 over r minus 1. So what makes us to use this formula? It's because we have r here. The absolute value of r here equals to 3. And this is greater than 1. So we use this particular formula. So we now have our sn, which is equal to x6 to be equal to a. Our a is 2. We get 3 to the power of 6 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. And yeah, if you try to solve this using calculator, we are going to have an answer which is equal to 728. And this is the sum of the first six terms of this particular series. So, take note of the formula that is being used in each particular case. And if you have to try to solve your own question, take note of whatever the absolute value of R is and choose the right formula that you are going to use. To round off, we are going to be looking at the sum to infinity. The sum of the nth terms as n approaches infinity is called the sum to infinity. And the sum is designated by S with the symbol of infinity equals to A over 1 minus R. So we still have our A to be equal to the first term and R to be the common ratio. Let's say, for example, if you have a series. By 27, 9, 3, 1. So, so if you have to find the sum to infinity of this particular series, you can have that S equals to A power of 1 minus R. Here we have our A to be equal to 27 and R equals to 9 over 27 and this equals to 1 over 3. We should notice this that the absolute value of R which is 1 over 3, is less than 1. So we have this formula. We have our a to be 27, yeah, over 1 minus 1 over 3. And this equals to 40 one over 1 over 2. So for this particular series, we have the sum to infinity to be equal to 40 one over 1 over 2. And wow, congratulations, we have come to the end of this tutorial. And as it is we used to do, at the end of this tutorial, we used to talk about the applications of the particular topic in real life. So, what are the applications of sequences and series in real life? The first point I would like to make is in finance. Sequences and series, they are greatly put to big use in finance. Take for example, if you have some capitals in the bank, you have savings in the bank, and it's been increased based on a part, at a particular rate, that's a simple interest. The interest grows by following a regular pattern. There are also ways in which we apply sequences and series in finance. So you can try to Go into this and learn more about it. Also, in physics, in statistics, sequences and series they are put into great use. So, if you have your first term, you have some kind of hundred terms. What if you are going to need the next five hundred term? So, there's something for you to be writing each of these term one after the other, one after the other. You can simply use one of the formula that you have looked at and check your fifty term, your five hundred term, or your seven hundred term. 
Also, a statistic. If you are to make some predictions, and we are going to need the term in which we don't already have at hand, we can use sequences and series to bring in that particular term. To wrap up, we have an exercise here. We are given the progression 25, 5, and 1. So we are supposed to find the fifth term, the sum of the first 10 times, and the sum to infinity. The answers are given below. Try to solve this and compare the answers. If you get everything, so I congratulate you. And you can now say you know more on sequences and series. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to share, like our video. If you want to know more on mathematics or you want some specific topic, you can check out our channel where we have a lot of playlists for you and special topics that will foster your knowledge of mathematics. So, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.